Redditors who got divorced within a year of their wedding. What happened? Why did you go through with the wedding in the first place? Story 1. I know a guy who got married and then asked for a divorce two weeks later. I don't know how long they dated, but I asked him when he knew the marriage wasn't going to work out. He said he knew the first night of the honeymoon. That's all the details he would give, but she must have left an impression on him. Story 2. My ex-husband and I had been best friends for seven years. According to everyone, we were soulmates. Well, we were madly in love and finally started dating, then moved in together, and after a year or so said our I do's. One month after we were married, he went out drinking with some friends. He tried some candy, and that was it. He became a severe alcoholic and candy addict. He drained our accounts, stole every penny, destroyed our house, violently threatened me, and finally disappeared. Then he overdosed and spent months in rehab, only to continue his habit the minute he got out. This sounds like a white trash love story, right? He was actually from a wealthy, upper-class family, was endlessly kind and loyal to us, very well educated. It was a complete shock to all of us with this behavior. He is still a junkie to this day. We were only married eight months from my due to divorce day in court. It still breaks my heart to this day. Story 3. Guilty. I had been with him for nearly six years. We had some rocky times, but really loved each other. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and struggled with alcohol use. We were in college, though, so it was easy to write off the alcohol abuse. Once we were married and moved away from college, it became quickly apparent that his problem was much worse than the average heavy drinker. Some gambling debt started to become an issue, and we were fighting all the time. Part of the problem was that I don't know how to help someone with addictive behavior. I don't understand it, but I didn't want to be the kind of wife who left her intellectually ill husband. Then one night, I took his keys when he came home drunk. He backed me into a wall and said, Do you want to make this a domestic situation? That was the trigger for me to end it. I said to myself, is this really the life you want? That was a sentence I should have said before we got married. It lasted six months. His mother blamed me for going back on my vows. Maybe she was right. I did go back on them, but I realized in the moment he threatened me that I didn't love him anymore. I was 24 and miserable, so I kicked him out. I've been with my current SO for five years on Friday and couldn't be happier with my decision. Life is good. Story 4. My best friend at the time got married and within two months his wife left for the military. They were together about two years beforehand, broke up a few times, and had a pretty rocky relationship. Getting married was their way of giving a middle finger to the world, that they were determined to stay together no matter what. From what I remember, this was a long time ago, she was going to join the military, and then he was going to move to wherever she was stationed to live with her, as soon they could do that, after boot camp or whatever. I don't know how the U.S. Army works. He drove up to visit her as soon as he was allowed to, he quickly realized he hated the place and hated the idea of having to move around every time she had to move. They got the marriage annulled or whatever soon after that. Story 5. Not me, but a friend. She started dating a guy we had not seen before and wasn't really the type of guy she used to date, some 7, 10 years older. She was like 25 by that time. Everything was fine. Posting stuff on FB of how great the relationship is. Then some 6 months later he proposed, which was weird by the timing. She wasn't pregnant. They just wanted to get married. Wedding and everything went fine. FB posts continued to be, this is great stuff. The guy suddenly didn't want her to work again. She was fine with that. But then it became a don't hang out with friends, which included us. 5,050 men, women, all in a relationship. And progressed to a don't get out of the house without telling me thing. FB posts stopped. She got divorced 7 to 8 a.m. after the wedding. She told us that by the end of the marriage, the guy just came home and asked if she wanted close relationship and eat the dinner. If there wasn't close relationship, he'll go out to party or something. Story 6. My sister had a friend that got divorced really quickly after her marriage. Six months, I think. The whole thing was rushed. They dated for less than a year. She married him because she was religious and thought she was receiving a spiritual prompting. After the marriage, they didn't act like newlyweds at all. Little to no holding hands, when they were sitting on a couch, they had a foot of space between themselves, etc. It wasn't long before they realized it wasn't going to work out. Story 7. Not me, but my mother got divorced six months after her first marriage. They were having problems. Went to a marriage counselor who, cow you not, told my mom that her husband needed one-on-one -on -one counseling, but that my mom was fine and could go home. After their divorce finalized, another wedding with the marriage counselor was in the works. Story 8. Just a hair over a year before we split up. And frankly, it was like he became a different person after the marriage license was signed. I told him from the beginning, no kids. He started pressuring me to get pregnant immediately. Joked about sabotaging the pill would guilt trip and all but extort close relationship and insist on no rubber band. I eventually just stopped so much as touching him close to the end. He didn't tell me how much debt he really had from his prior degree. He filed bankruptcy. 
You can guess where my credit score stood after that. He became increasingly jealous over the fact that I had friends. Not just male, but female friends. He'd demand to be shown the phone. He'd not be happy if I would text my friends and he wasn't privy to it. He would make comments how I'm a secret sapphic because I spend time with my female friends. He'd make remarks about how I don't need to see my mother. He'd just slowly and subtly guilt trip me for not giving him all of my time and attention. He'd constantly tell me, You're too young to know what you want. Six-year age gap. You're delusional. You don't know what you're talking about when I had an opinion contrary to his. And constantly, constantly in my personal space. It would be to the point where I'd lie to him about my class schedule. I was in college at the time and work schedule just so I could one. Be alone for a couple hours and two. Contact my friends without him hovering over my shoulder. I'd pick up extra shifts, anything to just be alone for more than a second at a time. And he was nothing like that when we started dating. Not in the least. Sweetest, most thoughtful, intelligent guy you'd meet. If he cheated, I don't know and don't care. But no one gets between me and my friends. And no one belittles me for having an opinion. Hell no. In retrospect, I'm sure I was no prize either. I certainly was naive in thinking that life would be better if I had my own household and life and etc. But frankly, in retrospect, that's the one thing I'm glad wrapped up clean and easy. He's a memory and stays that way. Story 9. I'll spare the sob story. Together for four years. I had reservations, but due to some past issues with my family, he was all I really had. And relied on him too much so when I wanted to wait, he was seven years my senior. He told me how much he loved me and how it would work because we belong together. All the stuff you believe when you love someone. Anyway, six months in, he cheated. First time in our entire relationship. Tried to work on it afterward, but he forgot our first year anniversary because he was out with her. Again, asked for a divorce and was finalized this past December. Story 10. I've got an uncle who has been divorced five times. All after two. Five months of the wedding. Yeah, I know. And every time it's the same, oh, no excuse, dot, dot, dot. It just didn't work out. We wanted different things. The same old cliched ones. It's no wonder half of my family thinks he's gayer than a French horn, and the other half thinks he beats them or something. Story 11. Mine was just under two years. Sorry for not meeting the criteria 100%. Our problem was an underlying incompatibility that I wasn't fully aware of. I'm not overly affectionate, and she very much needed that. Every time our relationship would get to a point where she was ready to make a split, we'd cross another milestone. I love you moving in engagement wedding and she'd be back on cloud nine without a worry in the world. I didn't know about this roller coaster she was until it was far too late. By the time we separated and sought counseling, she was already checked out and, unintentionally, gave me a dose of my own medicine by not being responsive to communication and intimacy or receptive to spending quality time together. Story 12. Two years here. She stopped loving me for who I am. She kept trying to make me into something I'm not. She would always be questioning me, belittling me, and emasculating me. I got so used to acting the part she wanted me to be, I almost forgot who I really was. She always made me feel needed, but never wanted. At one point, she told me she thinks she might have missed out on parts of life because we got married so young. Then, that she wasn't sure she loved me anymore. All of this, and I am the bad guy because I asked for the divorce. Story 13. I have a friend who got married December of 2013. Her dad dropped 100k on the wedding. In May of 2014, they split. He got addicted to some heavy sweets, and while he was high on whatever candy, he threw her against the wall and started yelling and screaming at her. She moved out and is currently in the process of getting a divorce. Story 14. I was acquaintances with this chick from high school who invited me to her bachelorette party. I was surprised she invited me because I had met her fiancé once. We were never that close. Me being a nerdy introvert, she and her group of friends being, woo, party girls. At the bachelorette, everybody was getting smashed and the bride-to-be seemed to be having the time of her life. At one point, all the other girls hit the dance floor, and the bride-to-be and I were sitting alone at the table. A serious look comes over her face. She turns to me, looks me dead in the eye, and says, Do you think if I disappeared tonight, Steve, her groom's name, would hunt me down and terminate me? I sat there with my mouth hanging open for a second before she quickly said, Never mind, jumped up and started dancing with her friends. She did marry him. They were divorced in less than three months, and she moved across the country. Story 15. I was married in August and left by Christmas, 2009. Dated him for 4.5 years beforehand. There were so many warning signs and he got more controlling after we were engaged. I say more because I didn't realize he was controlling at the time. It is always so gradual. He demanded his engagement ring back several times. He started telling me he didn't like my best friend, who hated him, didn't want let me to maintain any relationships with my guy friends, didn't like me wearing low shirts or tightish pants, Note that I am quite conservative. 
He decided to accept a PhD without telling me after I'd accepted my own position out of town. I had to withdraw my acceptance so we could stay together. Also, he was an alcoholic. He'd party with his single friends three, five nights a week. He was so difficult to deal with when he'd come home hammered and stoned, that is, often picked fights. He pinned me against the bed one night and told me to shut the fudge up. I told him I wanted to postpone the wedding, and his response was no. I felt I had no choice. Once we were married, he'd tell me many times when he was drunk that he didn't know if he wanted to be married to me. The final straw was his birthday. He demanded close relationship. At this point, I had previously told him I didn't love him anymore and would only have close relationship if it was from behind. No kissing, no talking, no eye contact, and over quickly. He didn't care that I felt that way. I cried the entire time. I felt violated and used. I consented only because it would be more difficult to say no. I left five days later. In the time we were separated before divorce, he followed me, recorded phone calls, showed up at my parents' house at 3 a.m. to HRS from his house, showed up at my best friend's apartment when he knew I was there, and slept with his students. That's just what I remember. I know I've repressed some of it. I was terrified of him. Since then, I've dealt with severe anxiety issues and I have a hair trigger fight or flight response. I'm shaking from nerves even thinking about this. Best decision of my life was to leave him. Story 16. I had a buddy who got married in the Navy. Immediately after getting married, his wife told him she had an affair while he was in boot camp. He had the marriage annulled the next day. He kind of seemed like too nice a guy to me who probably married the first girl he dated, yet had enough pride not to let her walk on him. So he has my respect. Story 17. Not quite under the line, but as I'm one of those people I'm posting anyways. Got married in February 2012. Did not know him well enough, and definitely didn't know his family. I was manipulated into moving more than 750 miles away from my family to take care of his mother with rheumatoid arthritis. I basically spent the seven months locked in a three-bedroom trailer with three people with the following official diagnoses. An unmedicated paranoid schizophrenic brother-in-law, an unmedicated borderline personality mother-in-law, and a stepfather-in-law with severe obsessive compulsive disorder, not to mention my extremely emotionally manipulative husband. All four were intellectually and spiritually abusive toward myself and each other. I was told that if I was not baptized a Mormon, that I wouldn't be trusted to be alone in the house every again. Considering that this happened for about 20 minutes once a week, that was not something I was willing to give up. Seven months in, I tried to have a rational adult conversation with my mother-in-law, explaining why it was inappropriate for her to call her husband at work and loudly call me a unpleasant because I had accidentally put a dirty fork in her soaking water. When she had already spoken to me about it, my brother-in-law stepped in and tried to tell me how abusive I was being by trying to talk to M.I.L. while she was still upset. I told him to shut the fudge up and he punched me in the stomach. Husband and I were homeless for the next three weeks before a friend let us move into the small apartment over his garage. I proceeded to spend the next six months single-handedly supporting my husband. His retail job was giving him only 12 hours a week or less, and he felt he owed it to his manager to be available at her beck and call since she had taken a chance on him when he'd been looking for a job for so long. Read eight days. He got the job eight days after we moved to Pennsylvania. I started threatening to leave in June of 2013. Every time I tried to voice a concern, whether it was that I needed more help around the house when working 60 hours a week and in school, or that his family was flipping psychotic, he would curl up into the fetal position and cry. In October 2013, we found out my 18-year-old cousin had advanced mesothelioma and probably wouldn't make it to 2014. He didn't. I told my husband I needed time alone to talk to my mother about arranging a flight home for his eventual funeral, and he lost his flipping mind. He went off screaming at me for a good 45 minutes about how selfish I was that I couldn't even spend 10 minutes with him. And why? Why, why was I being such a bad person? Because the conversation could wait. I'll be honest, I wasn't nice. But when five minutes after the screaming had stopped and the crying had started, I heard an odd noise. Went into the bedroom to find my husband trying to slit his own throat with a dull throwing knife. I left within an hour. Today he's hiding from me. He apparently googled the divorce laws for my home state and knows that I can't get a divorce in absentia unless I can unequivocally prove I haven't heard from him, nor have I been able to find him for an entire year. So every six months he sends me a new, fake address to send divorce papers to. Story 18. I was married for almost eight months. We were together for three years or so beforehand. I was going through a lot of cow in my own little world. My close friend boss for four years dying, my parents splitting up, etc. And we were paying for everything ourselves. I told myself things were wacky because we were both under tons of stress. She lost her job, where she was making almost twice as much as me per hour, 
two months after the wedding and refused to get another one. So here I am trying to support us on $8, 75 hour. She always drank a lot, but started drinking even more. She got mean and nasty and everything just spiraled out of control. We got married in September. She moved out in April. There's more to the story, but this is long enough as it is. Story 19. Made it a little over a year, but for me, got sent overseas for an unexpected three-year tour, so it was an all-or-none kind of situation. She had a lot of friends in the military, so I thought she would have realized how hard deployments can be and would be better able to handle them. Turns out she was not one of those people who handles the military stuff well. Even then, I would have sucked it up and dealt with it at least until I went through shore duty. But she moved back to the States with over a year left of me being overseas. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end. Story 20. A buddy of mine has two such stories. He got married to a girl at the age of 22 who he had been dating since high school. They spent $20,000 on their wedding in the early 90s. They were done in two months. She decided to start cheating. The second marriage was when he was in his late 20s. He was with her for two years. Within six months, she went crazy and tried to terminate him. She went to the loony bin for a while after that. He got married semi-recently, so hopefully this one works out better for him. Story 21. I was so close to helping her out, she was less than a day away from calling a divorce lawyer. It's not exactly within the parameters of the question, but the story is somewhat relevant. The poor girl not even 18, and it was with one of her father's friends, six or seven years older than her. He was probably an undiagnosed bipolar, but definitely a narcissist. Reveling in her teenage drama, every other month or week before their marriage for a year, they were together, or never seeing or speaking to him again, and blocked him on all my social media and phone. But he would stalk her, talk to her, and they would be back together within the week. After one of their breaks where he hooked up with an old girlfriend, she got jealous and said she was still on birth control and tricked him into impregnating her for a revenge baby, so he would stay with her. And he got super secretive after that, never letting her peek over his shoulder at his phone or computer. He used the baby against her when she got a restraining order against him for some of his extended stalking and verbal abuse. They got engaged because their cult of a church mandated they have to get married because they had premarital close relationship even with the restraining order. She violated it to go see him when her water broke and he drove her to the hospital. It was very awkward. Then not much later they're married. Big, expensive wedding in the biggest hall to rent in our town where their cult church is held. At home, his verbal abuse escalated to emotional abuse, gaslighting, child neglect, physical abuse, play wrestling, which would escalate to punches and her screaming, Stop! I couldn't drown out whenever I stayed at the house overnight downstairs. One time he just out of the blue yanked her hair really hard as she was just walking by him. I finally got up the courage that night to tell her I saw myself from a former abusive relationship where nobody told me what he was doing to me was abuse. And it extended to their child, where he would play video games, let his daughter cry hungry in the other room for six hours, face down in a puddle of her own overflowing diaper, too young to roll over, and only pretend to be the best dad ever several minutes before the mom came home from work. I revealed this via text message late at night, got some weird responses like, oh, that wrestling is just playing, I do it back to him all the time, and getting defensive on his side, till after 12 hours of conversing, he revealed himself as he had been going through her messages and impersonating her to get information out of me. She saw the messages the next day and called me over and we both agreed. Divorce was the right thing to do, since she was having to stay at her parents' house overnight, when his abuse would get too much since he refused to not be in the same bed with her and say things like, come on, babe, be into it. Don't make me feel like I'm assaulting you after big arguments. And she didn't want close relationship, but he went ahead with it anyway. She found out she was pregnant again shortly after our conversation, less than two, three months after her first baby and a month or so after the wedding. And her cult brainwashed family and exclusionary small-minded friends said it's a lifetime bond she can't break or she's a close relationship deviant and would be ostracized. Her marriage to that terrible man almost lasted two months, but now she's been dragged down to his level and has Stockholm Syndrome, is barefoot and pregnant, and gotten bitter and more religiously brainwashed than ever before. Story 22. I went through with the wedding because I loved her, obviously, and I thought she loved me. I mean, she proposed to me in a messed up way, as in guilt tripped me into proposing. I'm an idiot. Anyway, what happened was she became a different person, was never home when I was, always with friends. Stopped paying rent and other bills. I had to pick up the slack. She got mugged, so I gave her my credit card so she could get necessities. Gas, ECT, dumb move. And she runs thousands up on it, on irrelevant junk. Then when she leaves me, she keys my car and said she met a guy at a bar a while back. We were together for over eight years, and all that happened in a few months. Worst thing is that I shouldn't feel lost after she left me. 
but it hurts a year later still. Story 23. Basically, my parents threatened me and my ex saying we were living in sin because we were living together and not married. I was married at 18 and divorced at 19 because he wouldn't stop beating the cow out of me. Thanks, mom and dad. Had we just been dating, I would have just moved my cow out of the apartment and been done, but instead I had to go through hell to get a divorce. Story 24. My first marriage lasted a year and a half. The only reason it lasted for that second half a year was because California state law has an are you sure clause where you have to be separated at least six months. I met him through Facebook. He was from Scotland and I'm Californian. We were both young, 23 at the time, and wanted to carry on our relationship for more than a few weeks at a time. It was expensive to keep flying halfway across the world, so we decided to take the plunge. It wasn't until we were married that I found out he was around 30,000 pounds into debt with the Bank of Scotland before he jumped ship. Not only that, he was spending a lot of time driving around in my car to pick up high school girls while I was working. Of course, as the oblivious and dedicated wife, I didn't believe when people were telling me he was cheating. Even from the women who were sleeping with him. Not until years later, I found out that my brother's wife was telling me my husband was cheating on me because she was sneaking off with him on his guy's weekend campouts to have an affair. I had gotten her a job, was helping pay her bills, and fully supporting my husband, which is why she felt so bad and tried to tell me. Through the course of several months, he had gotten a job and never pitched in on the bills once. He was too busy spending all of his money on my brother's wife. The only thing that started giving me red flags was because he was getting Victoria's Secret catalogs, and I'm a size 16, and I would not be caught dead wearing anything from Victoria's Secret. His excuse later on was that I was a couch potato and didn't want to go on cycling trips with him. I worked at a golf course at the time and went horribly golfing several times a year. Even for being fat, I was a waitress and banquet server and ran my peach off for around 60 plus hours a week. I also got into Final Fantasy Affin at the time, waiting for him to come home from work. He had financed a $30,000 truck, got all the add-ons possible for it, which turned it into a $45,000 truck in my name and tanked my credit. Then took off to Missouri to try and marry the next sucker to keep him in the country. He knew he was going to debtor's prison, and to be honest, I hope he did. Really, it was just all bad. It was ugly. I started talking to other men on the phone in front of his face near the end because of his neglect, which makes me not 100% innocent either, and just got done with the nonsense. Pro tip. Don't marry someone just because they're from a different country. The novelty wears off after a while. Story 25. I left after 18 months, but I'll respond anyway because I'm a rebel like that, and I would like to get it off my chest. Neither of us were particularly young when we met and shared similar goals and values. We dated for six months before getting engaged and were married a year after that. Yes, the wedding was almost exactly the midpoint of the entirety of our relationship. I felt so happy to be part of a big, loving family as my own is deeply dysfunctional and abusive, and I've mostly them off. He had been saving for years to buy a home before we met, and was happy that an extra income would get him to that goal sooner. We agreed to start trying for a baby about six months after the wedding, never mind that he didn't have close relationship with me anyway, or care about fulfilling my needs in that department in other ways. This situation didn't change, and he would sometimes harangue me about why I wasn't pregnant yet. His family got on my case about that in less and less subtle ways as time went on too. They also had very few boundaries in ways that grated on me. He would never stick up for me when his friends and family were rude or offensive to me. One night I was mugged, and his response was to get falling down drunk in the middle of the city, leaving me stuck caring for him and physically getting him home after what I'd already been through. When we got home, he screamed that I was a flipping bad person, and any wonder nobody else loved me, abused as a child, remember? We were supposed to be trying to buy a house, as had been his own goal before we even met, but he never seemed to want to look. The house we were in was making me sick due to mold issues, but we had resolved not to move again until we were moving into our own home. I grew increasingly scared for his health. His weight was ballooning and he clearly suffered from sleep apnea and other health problems as a result. I began to be worried for mine and any potential child's future if he carried on down this path, especially as he never got around to taking out life insurance or any other protection plan, despite working in a related industry and making his money convincing other people of their importance. I finally left when he yelled and swore at me, calling me names in the middle of a crowded restaurant at a friend's toddler's birthday party. Shortly after I moved out, he started making plans for investing in business ventures with mates and traveling the world. Best I can figure, he got cold feet on the home buying and baby having after the wedding, and these were goals that he literally wrote into our wedding vows, and just never had the guts to actually enunciate that just passive aggressively undermining everything and becoming increasingly bitter and nasty. I wish I'd never met him, 
He's a great person as a friend, but as a partner and a husband, I feel like he's ruined my life, which I worked very hard to build after the childhood I endured. I lost so many mates we had in common, am financially ruined, and in one of the deepest, most enduring depressions of my life. Story 26. I know this is poor sounding and will probably get downvoted, but if you don't hear her or him on the phone talking about you when they think you're not around, you have no flipping idea what they really think of you and what their agenda is. People flipping lie. They lie to you and, worst of all, they lie to themselves. Hear them once talking about you to their best friend about how wonderful and considerate you are and stop worrying. You'll know. And don't ever tell them you heard that. Story 27. Not me, but my best friend in the military. He was seeing this young girl, 18, for about four months. Total honeymoon state. They are flipping all the time and I barely see him. We find out we are getting deployed and he figured he had to lock that cow down and I find out when he called me after not talking for the entire time they were together and asked me to be his best man. We deploy a few weeks later and as the months go by, he is getting less and less contact from her. To make matters worse, we would be out at our checkpoint in the middle of the desert for two weeks at a time with no phone or computer and mail only once a week. Long story short, she is flipping his ex-brother-in-law after she met him at my friend's family's Christmas party when he came to pick up his daughter. Details I'm leaving out, but they divorced shortly after we came home, but not before more drama, but that's a story for another time. Story 28. Six months here. Not six months to the divorce, but six months to the split up. There were a few reasons. One, I was in school, college, and my ex got pregnant. Given the rent where we lived at the time, it made financial sense for us to get an apartment on campus. But that wasn't possible without being married. Two, we were both young. We had met, fallen in infatuation, told ourselves we loved each other madly. We were soulmates, etc. All the stuff you say when you're young and you have no. Flipping. Clue. What love really is. We both came from families where our dads had recently, less than 10 years previously, adding to the weight of our already angsty mid-teen years, left. We were right around the same age when it happened. We were still stinging from it. We had so much pain in common that it bonded us, but it never occurred to us that it wasn't love. And at that point, with your father having recently left your mother, you're going to say, I'm never going to do that to the person I love. So you stay with the person, even though you don't really love them anymore, if you ever did in the first place. You agree, because you don't want to inflict that pain on someone else to make this commitment that you don't fully comprehend until you're in it. But then you underscore or underscore in it. You're looking at someone you don't really love, and you're looking at them every day, and you're slowly but surely building up a resentment towards them because they've trapped you in this life you don't want for yourself, and you're stuck, but you don't see a clear, painless way out. So you start to do stupid cow. You spend more time away from the apartment, hanging with your friends, doing the stupid cow that younger people like to do when they want to do stupid cow, and the responsibility and the commitment is still sitting there in the corner of your eye, gnawing at you and causing your resentment to build up even more. So then you start taking it out on them. Your temper becomes shorter with them. You spend a lot of time yelling when you are home, and you find more excuses just to get away from home because you don't even want to look at them and be reminded, as if you need to look at them to be reminded. And eventually it boils over. I'm not talking about physically boiling over, though I can't say I didn't come close a few times. In my mind, that is. I never threatened her or hit her, but it boils over and the blowouts come and you're sitting there realizing that you don't want to be with her anymore. She's leaving you because you're always angry and you don't pay enough attention to her. And you're fine with it because you're so pissed off at her for anything little. But you're probably most angry because way down deep inside, you're really breathing a huge sigh of relief. I honestly don't know if she had the same feelings about the situation that I had. I will readily admit that I did not see this then as I see it now. And that it's really only in recent years that I've been more introspective and honest about what happened. I think she felt the same way. Though if you were to ask her, she would tell you I broke her heart, that it was all my doing. I see it through my own admittedly skewed perspective as a mutual situation. I wouldn't call her the most self-aware person, something many would agree to. But I'll never really know. Can't say I care anymore. So listen, if you're still reading and you want my advice, if you want to get out but are afraid because you think it'll be painful, I promise you that leaving now is the most painless way out. I wish I were a better writer. Story 29. I divorced my now ex-wife after eight months. We had been together for just under eight years before we got married. I found a SDI test results form from Planned Parenthood in her purse, clean luckily. She was trying to make it as an actress and had gotten her first professional gig in another part of the country. While there, she'd slept with one of her co-stars without using protection. 
Nearly four years earlier, she had cheated on me while we were going through a rough time in university. I was incredibly distant, and she found someone else for about a month or two. We worked through that, but the habit had been formed. It turns out that over the next four years leading up to our marriage, she had occasionally slept with different people. What I thought was a one-off bad decision turned out to be a habit for dealing with her anxiety regarding her career, life, relationship, etc. I realized then and there that this would never end and that she was absolutely willing to put my and her health at risk while doing it. Why did I go through with it? Because I thought we were rock solid and in love. Why did she go through with it only to cheat seven months later? I don't know. She imploded her whole life and currently survives by mooching off her parents' retirement funds while none of our mutual friends, for example, basically all of her friends, won't speak to her anymore. Seems like a terrible idea to me, but I couldn't tell you what she was thinking or if she was. Story 30. Got divorced seven months after our wedding. We had rough times, but who doesn't? He was a cheater and very good at talking his way out of trouble. We had an argument about him not trying in our relationship while I was at work. I came home later that night and then told me we needed a divorce because I don't know how to put away the laundry. He also said he fell out of love with me and we were never meant to be. A few months later comes to find out he left me for someone else. Better off without him. Story 31. My colleague told me this yesterday over lunch in hopes that I would not turn into a madwoman like his ex-wife. I showed him and he requested to share his story here. A little bit of background, hope I get this right. This story is coming from the Southeast Asia part of the world where sons, in most cases eldest, are responsible for their family, be it before or after marriage. In some families, though it is no longer being practiced as much as older days, wives must move into the husband's family. In some cultures, after parents married off their daughters, daughters are no longer the responsibility of her family, but her husband's. I am the only son and a sister. While ex-wife, though, is the eldest daughter, but not the only child, two brothers and another sister. Throughout our relationship, she was very normal, a happy-go-lucky, cheerful, understanding, and almost a wife and mother material. After we got married, her parents tried to control me. We were staying with my family, and her family wanted us to stay with them instead. The real kicker came when the first child was born, and it is a son. Using our son as a leverage, ex-wife threatened me to purchase and move into a house next to her parents. She left our house and moved not her parents as a sign of protest. The following three months was filled nothing with love, but with threats being thrown at me. I filed for divorce when she decided that my parents are not as important as her parents and that they can live very well without me. She spent the next six months pleading to come back and refused to sign the papers. She signed when I said I would get a restraining order on her and that I can divorce her under two grounds. My advice, be firm on your decision. If you are not happy, do it. Do not trade your lifetime happiness for the sake of pleasing others. P.S. Owner of account. I hope I got the background story right. This is to my knowledge on how it works. It may not be 100% accurate, but it is somewhere there. Story 32. My aunt. So she was in the Air Force and married a guy she had met fairly recently. A beautiful wedding ensues, big money spent. They have a daughter together, and months after that, they are divorced. About six years later, my aunt marries another man, who she has a son with, and then divorces after, I believe, a year. These are open people too, bought clothes people that revealed new character traits after marriage. After this, she dates a man for about a decade. He is more part of the family than any of the others. That relationship ends because after her daughter looks up her father, my aunt eventually falls back in love with her first husband. And months later, the two are married. This time, he lives in North Carolina and her in New Jersey. So that's the most likely reason that they were divorced about a year later. This past Christmas, her second husband was at my grandparents' house with her. Maybe they'll get married again. All I know is that I will never take advice from that woman. She is probably the worst decision maker in the world, let alone the fact that she may also be the worst mother as well. Her daughter is now 30 and is about to get married, and I'd bet money they get divorced. Story 33. I had to look through here to make sure my ex-wife didn't post this. We were married just shy of two and a half years. I was an unpleasant person. We were living together for about nine months beforehand, and my boss suggested we get married. I would get a serious pay raise being in the military. During this period of time, she was looking to move out and end the relationship. I convinced her this was what was best. We got married at a courthouse in December and didn't tell any of our family. And to be honest, I still haven't actually ever told my parents. They knew. I knew they knew. It just went unspoken. Even during the I am getting divorced conversations. Throughout the relationship, it would swing from really good to really bad. I was manipulative and hot cold with her. I spent some time in a mental hospital less than a year into it after having a breakdown where I was having homicidal ideations towards her for no reason. Never hit her or hurt her, just imagined it. Got out and was stabilized on medications I eventually stopped taking. 
This ended my military career, and in the process of dealing with getting out, I was paralyzed in anxiety. This entire time, we had never learned how to communicate properly. I didn't know what she needed, even if she told me because I didn't listen. She didn't know to speak to me the way I wanted to be and to push me. Again, this is probably my fault. Eventually, she left me, as she probably should have done in the first place. I am leaving out lots of other poor things I did. I don't see myself as a bad person, and I wasn't purposefully doing anything malicious towards her. I thought this was normal. I don't think she was entirely blameless, but I feel like I deserve the lion's share of blame. The good news? After the divorce happened and I spent a lot of time reflecting on what I did wrong and acknowledging the mistakes to myself, something I hadn't bothered to do while married. When she left me, I was blindsided. I thought things were fine. I have since had a couple of healthy relationships, and I feel like I have learned from the mistakes of my past. We haven't spoke since the divorce. I moved out of state before it ever finalized. After reflecting on how much of an insufferable, unpleasant person I was, I considered sending her a letter to apologize, although the version she knew of me would probably see this as some sort of self-gratifying act. So I figure it's best to let her succeed and not try to stir up previous drama. She was a smart girl, so she's probably doing well in whatever she's doing. Story 34. I wish my story was as juicy as some of these. We were done well before the wedding, moving in different directions for years, but sometimes things find a way to happen. She tried to get serious about how married life would be different, and I finally said no, it won't. We separated after eight months, and the divorce was final, right at the year mark. Story 35. This thread makes me want to go home and hug my wife. Dated for one year, moved in together for six, and been married for five. It always surprises me that people get married after so short of a dating span and haven't even tried living together. I know it's the old way of doing things. People get pressured, and some people might even get told that you are living in sin. Tell these people to fudge off. It is your life, and you have every right and reason to test out the way things might be before marrying someone. If you even decide that marriage is a route you want to take in life, a marriage certificate isn't some magical piece of paper that makes everything acceptable and happy with glitter and rainbows every day. It's a lifelong commitment to build a life with the person you are entering that contract with. You have to take the worst and the best of someone, no exceptions, or it will never work. Don't go into that contract without having a test run and knowing the better and worst. Don't make compromises on things you know you won't be able to put up with forever. And even after that, it's still a gamble. Story 36. Dated off and on for a few years, then seriously for six more, married and divorced eight months later. I felt she deserved what would make her happy and agreed to the nuptials. Once married, she changed completely, lost sight of our goals and commitments, declined to further her education and career, and all the while spending was getting out of control. I had started making better money, paid off all bills, credit cards, and vehicle, and felt she was basically using me. We had plans to build a house which she kept revising until it was extremely over budget and out of reach. Story 37. My cousin was married to her husband for a little over seven, eight months or so when they got divorced. They had only dated for about a year before getting engaged and got married about eight, nine months after. The main problem in my cousin's life has always been her mother, my aunt. The older her daughter gets, the more involved she has to be in her life. She is a very negative person and always draws attention to herself with various medical conditions she apparently has or complaints she has about everything and anything. When my cousin and her future husband were dating, my aunt would always want to hang out with them. She would actually complain if they went to a movie and didn't invite her. She was planning their lives together even before they got engaged. When they moved in together, my aunt insisted on a special room being set aside for her to stay in when she would come to visit. Not necessary, she lived 20 minutes away. And she would become involved in every problem they had. After the wedding, it just got worse. She wanted to come and stay with them all the time. She was personally involved in every argument. After a while, my cousin's new husband started taking more business trips out of town and then eventually just left. After the divorce, he sent a letter detailing his frustration with family involvement in their marriage and how he couldn't handle it anymore. I feel really bad for my cousin because she was very much in love with him, but didn't seem to be able to set boundaries with her mother. After the divorce, her mom basically moved in with her and has been there ever since. It's been almost a decade now, and my cousin hasn't had a serious, loving relationship since then. We've been told as a family that we are to pretend her marriage never happened. In my opinion, my aunt has ruined her daughter's life. Story 38. We got deployed. She decided that she hated me and no longer loved me. After we got home and all the cow I went through because of it, I started to resent her. When we got the divorce finalized, she immediately started dating a guy she had been a little too close with on deployment. Admitted to me a few months after that she messed up up. All I said was, I know. Why did I go through with it? Because I loved her and still do a little. Story 39. 
My ex was catching up with a friend who was back in town, visiting from another state. This guy's family home was about 45 minutes, an hour drive away. He rang and said, Mate's mum is dying of cancer. Mind if I chill here for the weekend to cheer him up? Of course I say fine and to pass on my best wishes. Turns out he was staying with and hooking up with some chick he was friends with on Facebook. The cancer thing was a scam. He said, it's the human condition. I said, it's divorce. Story 40. My friend turned 18 and immediately got eloped to her first ever boyfriend after only knowing dating him for four months. He immediately shipped off to army training the day after they found out she was pregnant. About 1.5 months in, he stopped calling her and withdrew all the money in their shared bank account. Turns out he met a stripper, fell in love with her, and had gotten her pregnant and planned to marry her. Eventually, after divorcing my friend, my friend's dad knew the kid's drill instructor, told him what happened, and the army kicked him out for running out on his wife, stealing their money and leaving her alone to raise the baby. I know this sounds horrible, but she miscarried due to the stress and I couldn't be more thankful for that. It's seven years later and she is happily married to a wonderful person and they have two kids. Story 41, kind of late to the party so I'll make it short since it'll probably be buried. If not, I'll go more into it. She told me she cheated on me while I was at work with some guy she randomly met at a bookstore. Then things started to go downhill, as is to be expected. And she told me she made it up to test my love currently going through the divorce process.